Hey, what's going on, guys? We're back to another video. Today I'm going to review Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2003 series. So, here's our final conclusion of the Team NT TV show reviews. Then we're going to go on to the movies. But we're not going to start with the live action one. We're going to start with Turtles Forever since that's the real conclusion to this 2003 series. So, we'll review that first. And, yeah. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, I rewatched the first three episodes, half the third episode, because. Not because I was bored, no. I loved it, but. I feel like, yeah, I got enough information to know what I want to talk about, because I used to watch a show as a lot as a kid. I did watch as much as I watched the 2012 series. This show and the 2012 series were my favorites, because, I don't know, there was a difference to me between the 2012 and 2003s that 2012 had funny moments, but also being mature, but this one felt the same thing, except it felt a lot more mature, like, really mature, like... You should know what I mean by really mature. Like, there's a lot of changes to this show. And they this I think out of all these shows, this one follows the comic the most. So, I mean, it really does. Because there are some scenes that are just ripped straight out from the comic. Like, that's awesome. Like, we hear Leonardo's line in the first line of the Team T, the comic. In the first episode, you hear him say, my name is Leonardo. Like, that's, so, like, that's really cool. So... Other thing is that April O'Neil worked for Baxter Stopman, so yeah, that just like in the comics, and I think that's pretty cool that they this one try to follow the comics. It's kind of like the eighty seven cartoon in the comic where mother and father, and they gave birth to two thousand three series and two thousand twelve series. So two thousand twelve series follows up the mother, the eighty seven cartoon, while the comics follow up their dad. Well, not the comics. The two thousand three series follows up their daddy, the comics. So. They're trying to be the comics, and I like that they're trying to be the comics instead, instead of being, like, the mo the previous show. I'm glad they tried to go for a darker route, but I think they should have went... But I would like to see a, much, a show like this, except much darker, where there's blood, like, it's not even for children, it's for more of a teenage audience, like, dark and edgy. Like, I think that would be cool, like, for the original comic books, like, the OG comic books. So... I have watched a lot of episodes of this series, like I said, and I don't remember how many I watched back then, but I just rewatched the first three episodes. I mean, the whole series is on YouTube, but the reason I didn't watch it all because I don't really have the much time because of school and stuff. I know they're thinking, oh, just watch it all on the weekends, but I want to do other stuff as well, and I want to get these TMNT stuff done, so I'm sorry, everyone, I, I couldn't watch the whole series, but I think I have enough information to talk for what I want to talk about, and... The turtle. Let's talk about the animation. The animation is gorgeous. The animation is awesome. I think out of all these, including the 2012 series, this is the best animation for them. However, for like I think the first three seat, first four seasons maybe. I th when was what season was fast forward? Cause that's where I haven't gone. I sk I probably skip season fast forward, cause I watched like throughout like basically season basically you know how the show was with this animation then I went to back to the sewers animation and we'll talk about back to the sewers animation in a little bit but what I'm saying for the first three seasons the animation is flat out gorgeous the turtles look amazing Master Splinter looks amazing April O'Neil looks gorgeous and hot and your big boobs <laughs> Casey Jones looks like a badass motherfucker and the shredder don't get me started on the shredder he looks badass like and his voice is so threatening. Like, it's scary. If I saw... I... Oh, my God. I can't even have words describe the Shredder. We'll get to him later about who he really is. Because I don't want to spoil it. Because he is awesome. He's a badass. Like, he takes the show when he's on screen. In my opinion. I think he, like, steals the show. It's like the Dark Knight with Joker. Where every time Joker's on screen, he takes the show. Like, he takes over. Like... Every time he's on screen, he's always the cool guy, like, everyone wants to pay attention to. The exact same thing with Shredder on this. They want to pay attention, you want to pay attention to the Shredder in this show. And I think that's better than any other Shredder sh Team and T show could do. Even my favorite one, the 2012 series, because I think the 2003 series has the best version of the Shredder. And uh, I love to see this version of Shredder in live action for the Team and T reboot I, I heard they're making. So I would love to have this version of the Shredder, because I think it would be scary and threatening. Okay, so, for, like, when it gets to the fast-forward thing, the animation actually did start the change, and I'm like, no, I don't like that. And then we get back to the sewers, I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? They looked so gorgeous back then. Why did they change it? I mean, here's what they used to look like in the beginning of the 2003 series. This is what they used to look like. Now look at them now. Ugh. I mean, the animation's not that bad. It's still good, but... 
it, it just got worse for me because look at their, they have eyes now. I mean, like, thinking, what's wrong with, I'm not even thinking, what's wrong with that? Well, I mean, yeah, they had it in the 87 cartoon, but I felt like that fit, like, the animation. For this, I prefer the white eyes because I think, because this show's supposed to be taken a lot more serious. This show trying to follow the comic, and that's the problem with the later seasons because they try to get all goofy. And I don't like it, especially with the fast forward stuff. What I've seen of it, I do not like fast forward. I think it just looks stupid. I'm like, okay, they're in the future. That's kind of stupid. I mean, yeah, the new show's supposed to be serious, but come on, that's just stupid. Fast forward? I mean, so what? Okay, maybe it happened in the comic. I don't know, because maybe that one, the some kid with the per blue jacket. But I will say the fast forward intro is decent, but it's probably the least interesting of them all. And I would say the, however, what I have said back to the sewers, the positive. The intro is kick ass. I'll send a link in the description of the back to the sewers intro because it is really good, really good. I almost go to show it's it's the best intro of the series, hands down. So that's one thing I'll say that the intro kept getting better and better, except for fast forward. But, but then it got good again with back to the sewers intro. And this show lasted seven seasons, so I was almost gonna say this was the longest. But then I remember the eighty seven cartoon had ten seasons, so this is the second longest series of TMNT. So it's close. So. Yeah, I kind of liked it better when they had white eyes because look at the 2012 cartoon. They went back to like the normal eyes and have the white eyes, but there are some moments where they did have the white eyes because in the 3D cartoon where to in the 2012 series, what I'm trying to say, when they have the like, the t the white eyes, that means you're su you're supposed to take that moment seriously. Like if there's a dark moment in that show. Then they have white eyes. Then you're supposed to take it seriously. Really serious. They're in a serious mood. Not No jokes around. White eyes, serious mood. And that's why, like, in the earlier designs of this show, they had the white eyes. Because this show is supposed to be taken more seriously. And I didn't like how the animation kind of got worse, in my opinion. But it still didn't mean the show was bad. No, 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 no. It's not like Marvel Spider-Man where the show is awful and horrible writing. Unlike this, the animation might not be as good as it was earlier, but it still had good writing, in my opinion, because I remember the first Back to the Sewers episode I saw is where there was this guy who looks, looks like some Green Lantern look like. Instead of a ring, he had a cape, and Raphael became, like, whatever that guy was, and Mikey wanted to be it, so he was jealous. And I don't remember the episode really well, but I liked it. I enjoyed it. For some reason, as a little kid, I felt like, hey, it's Green Lantern. What's he doing here? He's DC. This is TMNT. Because I was stupid as a little kid, and I felt like any per character who looked familiar was magically that character. So I probably thought, like, oh, that's Green Lantern. Why is Green Lantern here? <laughs> For some stupid reason, as a little kid. Uh, and they showed characters from the comics, actually, and created... I wouldn't say create some new characters. We didn't see any, like original characters from the 87 cartoon in this show, because this show, like I said, try to follow the comics more. So you didn't see, like, stuff like the Krang. I believe the Krang was original in the 87 cartoon, I believe, because he didn't appear in the show at all. Instead, they were the Utrominators who appeared in the show. And let's get back to the Shredder, because plot twist, and I thought this was an interesting idea when I first heard of it. Even when I saw this little kid, I'm like, what? Um, Shredder in this show... Is not Amato Yoshi. That's a that's just a fake name. He's actually a Neutrominator. Like he's like born them. Some people would call him Shred Crane. Cause I'm like when I first saw them, I'm like, well, that's interesting. Like, like he's just like you're like thinking this guy, the biggest threat who almost literally killed the turtles, is like this Crane type shit. <laughs> like you might think, oh, that's amazing. Like this guy is tough. Even without the suit, he's still tough. Like. Now, in the thing of the show, when they first fought the Shredder, they got their asses kicked. But in their last battle, they fucking won. They kicked his ass. That was amazing. I remember seeing that episode being like, yeah, get him, fuck him. And, oh man, I'm getting like, too excited for this. Oh man, I'm off topic. Okay, back, um, I made, I was checking my video and I made a mistake. I said, Amato Yoshi was the Shredder. Fuck no, it's Master Splinter, he's Amato Yoshi, well, in the 87 cartoon in 2012 series, Splinter is Amato Yoshi, but in the original comic and this show, Amato Yoshi is just someone else, uh, Splinter is just Amato Yoshi's pet rat, and he got, well, you know the story, and Urukusaki in this is not human like in the 87 cartoon in the 2012 series, he's actually an alien from another world. 
And, it, so, and it's really interesting idea. I don't know how to explain it, but it's really cool. And not, and th- this show actually is really dark. Like, with Leonardo um, almost dying, and, oh, with Baxter Stopman. Um, and this, he hasn't become the fly. And this, like, he just gets abused by the Shredder until he's just a brain. Like, by, like oh, that's deep. That's really deep. And, um, I don't know what else to say. It's just the show's so good. Yeah. Oh, I think that's really it for me. I think I'm out. I just think the show's really good, and I highly recommend it. In fact, I think almost ev- I think pretty much all the team and T shows are really good. Like you see my ratings for them, except Next Mutation. That one sucks. Skip that one and watch every other team and T show. They're worth your recommendation if you're a true fan of team and T. So my five work is a ten out of ten for the show. It's a good show. I highly recommend it. If you're more into like say, campy and over-the-top and funny moments, watch the 87 cartoon. But you're also a little bit for maturity and funniness, watch the 2012 series. If you're more just for mature, then watch this show. If you're in for another, like, stupid comedy, just watch Rise of the TMNT. If you want something to laugh at, to get drunk, watch the next mutation. So that's all I gotta say for the TMNT shows. We have finally concluded them. I'll see you next time when we review Turtles Forever to start our movie series. I'm out here, Excelsior.